Court leader Raila Odinga there speaking at the Orange House, of course, in regard to what is going on at a parliament where Ababu Namwamba is being grilled by the Powers and Privileges Committee. Arun Ching will have those details in our coming bulletins. Let's now shift to another perspective of the PAC intrigues. The Public Accounts Committee is Parliament's powerful organ to check government successes on expenditure. But the graft and bribery allegations rocking the current PAC has dwarfed its reputation compared to some of its predecessors that were bold and wavering and steadfast to flag out corruption incidences, name and shame powerful cabinet ministers implicated in graft. He pioneered the first public investment committee in 1992 in the advent of multi-party politics, a crucial watchdog committee to check the Kanu regime. It is under their tenure that former Webuye MP Musikari Kombo pushed for the establishment of the Anti-Corruption and Economic Crimes Committee, an equivalent to the Public Accounts Committee. At that time, uh, one of the, 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 the George Angwen was uh, a member of that committee. He was then uh, an assistant minister. Uh, when we left Naivasha, before he reached the escarpment, he had been sacked <laughs> from being an assistant minister because he had been participating in a meeting of rebels. But we were not rebels. The new Anti-Corruption and Economics Crimes Committee would begin a probe into corruption scandals pre-multi-party era. The result was a bold and damning report that named and shamed powerful cabinet ministers in the Kano regime. Despite the report being tabled in Parliament, nothing came out of it as Kano marshaled its numbers to expunge the names from the report. We decided that we shall be bold and we shall name to shame. And I think that's the first time in, this, in the history of this country that uh, people were named. Omingo Magara sat in the powerful Public Accounts Committee during the NAC regime. After the lead was lifted on the anglo leasing scam, he shepherded a probe and consequently tabled a report unmasking the unscrupulous deals and billions of sums lost. There are two things you cannot do at the same time. You cannot chew and talk at the same time. If you are chewing for your own benefit, the Kenyans who have given you a voice to speak will be voiceless. In my committee, we chose to speak. Despite pressure, government's opposition and manipulation doctoring the first anglo leasing report, the PSC then remained steadfast in its role to expose the rot within government in emptying public coffers. They gave us a voice to speak. Those poor women who give you a vote can't speak English in parliament. Please express yourself, not then robbing them again of the taxes to enrich yourself further, actually compromising the money you are given. So I think uh, corruption is a crime that should be given the maximum sentence if possible. There is general consensus that the gains made in emboldening parliament in its watchdog role is fast being degraded. People like the late Shikuku, wherever they are, sitting in the grave, people who really believed in the fight against corruption, uh, seeing this, people like myself seeing this, yeah, yes, you will feel betrayed. Those deaths that we incur are not supposed to be incurred. And it's a pain to all of us in Kenya that Today, uh, the public debt is soaring into about two, 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 three, two, two trillion shillings. The acrimony facing the Ababu Namwamba led PSC has soiled the reputation of Parliament with the former watchdog crusaders saying the National Assembly has terribly failed in its representation role. The Public Accounts Committee finds itself in a credibility crisis, caving into corruption pressure, essentially falling short on its former investigative committees that, in the face of adversity, still wedded through the murky political waters to expose the rotten government and deterred. Samogina Ketian, Nairobi.